everybody, Frank Forte here. Just thought you guys might like to do another book look with me. This is I Taught I Taw a Putty Tat by Jerry Beck, 50 Years of Sylvester and Tweety. Really cool book if you like uh, animation or the history of animation or Warner Brothers animation. Um, this is kind of a rare find, but uh, Jerry Beck does put out some really cool books. He's an animation historian. He knows a lot about the biz, the animators, um, the people that did all the work behind the scenes, guys. Starts out with a really cool, um, you know, front piece of like animation drawings and model sheets. Again, we've got a little Tweety animation model sheet here, which is also really cool. Um, uh, <clears throat> by Jerry Beck, 50 Years of Sylvester and Tweety, by Henry Holt Company in New York. I uh, got a lot of photo credits in there. Um, starts out with a really cool screenshot here of uh, Tweety and Sylvester from uh, Birdie and the Beast, 1944. It's actually from a limited animation cell. Um, but I love these books that Jerry Beck does because there's always a lot of... He tries to put a lot of animation drawings, the rough stuff, the model sheets, and everything that happened, um, you know, before the cartoon, which is something as a animator and artist, I love seeing that rough stuff. Um, so we have a little history here of Tweety. Um, it talks about his early years, you know, who created him. Um, you see little model sheets like this, uh, publicity artwork, and, uh, you know, uh, this right here, this is the stuff that I kind of like. This is like Virgil. This is actually Virgil Ross animation. And he was one of the top animators at Warner Brothers. Virgil Ross animation from A Mouse Divided 1953. And just looking at this stuff, this stuff is great if you're an animator and you want to learn. You know, just like how the Warner Brothers guys did it. I mean, great posing, antic, back, jump, boom. Like, it's just great. Like, if, if you're an animator and you want to learn stuff, just copy that as a test, you know? I mean, you don't usually see this in animation books anymore because so little 2D is even done anymore. Um, look at that. I mean, these great up-close shots. It's great expression shot there with Sylvester. I mean, Jerry Beck really picks. And, like, this is the cool stuff. Like, you can see these this um action lines like you could see on the cell how these guys were doing this and getting that effect when you see it moving you can't really see that but when you stop and look at the cell you're like oh it's like a brush it's like a dry brush and they're kind of like how did they get that like a dry brush or they scraped it off it's just really cool to see these like action lines actually on the cell oh and this is great too Publicity art for all the cartoons. I mean, you don't usually see this because you see the title card in the cartoon, but these were all probably drawn by a lot of the studio artists and, you know, they were either in the, um, the theaters to show what was coming, but look at these, all little masterpieces in themselves. Um, see in there, again, what I'm seeing is like, you could stop and look at these swipe and blur effects that they were doing. Um, and a lot of great, you know, pieces right from the cartoons. Here you go before the cat and the canary and they talk about, you know, just the old black and white, you know, uh, gag cart, not cartoons, but black and white gag reels that they used to do. Um, and this is where the Warner Brothers guys got it. You know, Charlie Chaplin, um, Keystone Cops, Max Sennett, all these guys. Um, and they kind of took that stuff and just took it a step further. Here's some of that old rubber hose stuff from the 1930s. And here's some, you know, I love these, these kind of drawings here. Um, and then here's like a, little history of how they animate stuff. Line art, colored cell. And here's some behind the scenes stuff. This is always really cool if you're into the history of Warner Brothers. Um, bunch of guys here. Mike Maltese, he's a famous story guy. Um, it's Mike Maltese again. Maltese talking to the story guys with the storyboards up. I mean, this is how Disney, MGM, Universal, like all the cartoons that were done back in the day did this stuff. 
There's an old school animation camera. Look at the animation desks here. I love this stuff. I love this stuff. And you know, here's Warner Brothers characters. And then, you know, it's it's just stuff like this that like these rough drawings is really kind of what I get excited about. These kind of pencil drawings to see where the animators were coming up with the ideas. But you've got a lot of history here of the cat and the bird and how like this stuff, like this was an early Tweety where he had that thing on his head. Um, yeah, and then A Tale of Two Kitties. This was an early Warner Brothers cartoon with a kind of Tweety bird. And, you know, these are kind of like uh, Abbott and Costello characters, but I think this was an early version of what became Sylvester. And I guess they call that the first Tweety cartoon. Tweety model sheet. You know, and here you have kind of like early storyboards, right? Look at these. I mean, the storyboards are drawn impeccably. I love seeing these early gag things. There's Bob Clampett. gruesome twosome and then like these model sheets too like just to see these guys clamp it unit leon schlesinger i think they're saying tom mckimson tom mckimson robert mckimson's brother he did these but th this right here every drawing in here is like a study in how to draw cartoons i mean they're great and then you just see a lot of great you know held cell art you know, screenshots, and then down here, however, Jerry got these are like model sheets or animation drawings. I mean, look at these. These are great. Look at this. Now, this is probably either a storyboard or an, an actually animation. Um, I think this is an animation drawing. And then here we've got some great screenshots where you could just sit and look at these drawings. Just classic slapstick animation. And you've got some more model sheets. Here's some Sylvester drawings. Looks like storyboards here. And guys talking about storyboard sketches by Rod Scribner from Bob Clampett's Birdie and the Beast. So it's actually a it actually is a, um, a Sylvester and Tweety cartoon. Ted Pierce, Michael Maltese, Bob Clampett, Warren Foster, Fritz Freeling, and Robert McKenzie. I mean, those guys are like, that's the brain trust of Warner Brothers, pretty much. But pretty cool to see those guys having fun. Tell me that's not, tell me that's not a fun job, hanging around with those guys all day. Um, some other great drawings here. And then uh, what, what, um, Jerry Beck is really into is just the, the process so he goes into these uh, backgrounds and these guys too if you don't know them Richard Thomas Paul Julian Peter Alvarado Philip DeGard Irv Weiner Boris Gorlick Bill Butler Tom McLaughlin all these guys are great in their own right for doing background and layout and I wish there were some more of the just the backgrounds i thought there were but maybe there isn't maybe it's just one page um more cool screenshots along with like these storyboards which are great uh more storyboards for a cartoon just to see how they're kind of writing and drawing at the same time like these things were not written with scripts they were written with storyboards which is kind of cool here's a little uh i think this is uh yeah how they're how they're giving out the little animation gags and what they're gonna do. It's like an animation sheet. Some animation drawings, model sheets. Again, it's just great to see like this background and the history is just great too. And then, yeah, I think Chuck Jones came in and did some. And then these, um, these things are cool too. These are the Sylvester and Tweety comic books by Dell. Now these, I found out recently, were drawn, I think, by some of the layout guys, which included Tom McKimson, who was Robert McKimson's brother. These guys went off and did um, their own. They, they did a lot of the comic books. So they were actually the studio guys doing the comic book art 
and you can look into that if you search it who exactly it was but they didn't get credit so they're not credited in the comic book which kind of sucks but again great screenshots this is more like a um oh limited edition cell right so i think they probably redid that background it doesn't look like a production background some cool granny art you know here's the sylvester's kitten and what was his name again I forgot i know he has a name I can't remember great but look at that this is a classic um cartoon background of the door and the stoop and the character spumco used it woody woodpecker i mean if you want to do a classic cartoon do this scene it's just cl it's classic Hippity Hopper, another great one with the um, kang uh, kangaroo. And then just these just these model sheets that you don't always see are just great. Speedy Gonzalez, and here's a bunch of, um, I think these are the title cards from the show. And then it goes into all of the different cartoons. So one by one, he just goes through all of them, and there's some great, great screenshots of Sylvester and Tweety. This is where Sylvester meets Foghorn Leghorn, another classic episode. And see, a lot of these are directed by Robert McKinson, who is actually one of my favorite directors. Um, he might not be as popular, you know, as like Fritz or Chuck Jones or Tex Avery, but he did, I think he did most of the uh, Foghorn Leghorns, and I, I think he's just fantastic. Uh, doggone Cats, like little model sheets in here. And it's just great to kind of look at when you can just sit here and stare at some of these screenshots, you can really get a sense of the composition, the background, you can kind of study them. I think it's great to look at the color and how the characters worked with the color. You know, sometimes when the cartoon goes by fast, if you're not freeze framing it, you kind of miss it. But goes through, yeah, little screenshots of all the episodes. So it's really, really thorough. And then you've got, yeah, something like this, which is probably like a either a storyboard or an animation drawing. It's just great to see that stuff in there. And, you know, look at that. I mean, he really picked some great, great shots to put in there. Hippity Hopper, Scarlet Pumpernickel, All a Bird, Home Sweet Home, Canary Row, Stooge for a Mouse, Pop on Pop. I mean, it just goes through all of them. I mean, when I was when I first came out to L.A., like all I did was want to go to bookstores and find as many of these books as I could. And I've got a bunch of them. And I'm just going to go through all of them like Anchi Tweet. I mean, look at this, this animation drawing. This is just superb. I love stuff like this. I mean, I would rather collect this stuff than the um, cells myself. No business. Look at these. These drawings here are just great. I wish I could do a whole, I could see a whole book of that stuff. Caddy Cornered, Hippity Hop. Another storyboard. And like these, I don't know if a lot of these survive, so it's cool to see the storyboard stuff in action. 1954. Satan's waiting. This is a famous one where Sylvester goes to hell. I always loved that. It always scared me. But here's cool to see like the actual storyboards. It's great. So that could have been story by Warren Foster, Virgil Ross. Could have been Warren Foster doing that stuff. I don't know. They were never, they never signed their work. But more, uh, another animation historian would probably know that stuff. But the storyboards. 1956, Tweet and Sour, still great stuff. Robert McKimson, Fritz Freeling were directors. Fritz Freeling, Robert McKimson, Fritz Freeling. So Fritz and Robert, I think, did a lot of these. Look at these. Yeah, and then in the 50s, you could see how the backgrounds got a little more stylized when, um, you know, Boris Gorelick did these backgrounds. So, you know, they were just following Maurice Noble stuff, I think. The, 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 the background design kind of changed. They went a little more 
kind of abstract and artsy with flat color. I like that stuff too, though. Again, more storyboard art. Storyboards again. Bird in a bonnet. Trick or tweet. Tweet and lovely. Cat's paw. 1960. Yeah, these guys went in up into the 1960s. Last Hungry Cat. That's that's one of my favorite ones for sure. And that's a later one. You know, a lot of people they might just like the stuff from the 50s, but a lot of this stuff. Yeah, Mexican Cat Dance, Chili Weather, Claws in the Lease, Freudy Cat, Nuts and Bolts. These are all really good. And yeah, they brought uh, Speedy Gonzalez into a lot of these. Some cameos, feature films, television specials, and then um, yeah, like was, this is this is like you, you go into like the credits, right? So here, if you want to know the story, man, Warren Foster, McKim's and Tid Pierce, all of the guys and what they worked on. I mean, Jerry Beck's really knowledgeable about this stuff, so that's pretty interesting. If you want to know who did what, I mean, look at that too. You know, like four pages of like the credits. It's Jerry Beck. So a great book if you can find it and you're an animation person. That's I Taught, I Taught a Putty Tat. 50 Years of Sylvester and Tweety um, by Jerry Beck. Um, definitely check it out if you can. Again, this is Frank Forte coming to you uh, from my studio in LA. Um, love animation, uh, Goon Cartoons is our channel where we do original cartoons. We sometimes show vintage cartoons and uh, talk about animation. Um, Asylum Press is my comic book company and you can find me at Frank Forte Art at um, Twitter, uh, Instagram, and TikTok, I'm around. Okay, thanks guys. <laughs> Hey everyone, you can check me out on the web at frankforte.com. I have a store there where I sell all sorts of merchandise, artwork, sketches, comic books, enamel pins, stickers, all sorts of cool stuff. You can find me on social media, Frank Forte Art on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. And even update blogger sometimes, but check me out if you want to buy t-shirts and stuff. I have all that stuff on Threadless. Society 6 and Spring, so you can find other types of merch there. Uh, thanks for watching and subscribe. Thank you.